بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello world, Dr. Zhu here and welcome to the Alive with Dr. Zhu show on 247online.tv. So welcome all of you. And as you know, we have four little segments in this show. And then the first segment is our mind session. Today, what we are going to um, look over is our largest uh, composition of our body, which is water. And we're going to link everything to that. So our first session is our mind. So question is today, what feels bad? Now, have you ever thought about what feels bad when something wrong happens or bad happens and all of a sudden you have a feeling inside of you? What is that basically what feels bad? So there's a scientific uh, explanation to that and one aspect is linked to our water, water level. So um, our body is made out of 70% water and as you know that there is no living on the earth without water and your body cannot sustain itself no longer than three days basically without water. So this is how important. So when something feels bad is linked to a very interesting research which is coming from Dr. Emoto from Japan. So as you can see behind me there is a water crystal. Water crystal, crystals are formed in the water in uh, depending on what kind of exposure are your body and your mind is and your body water is receiving. So interestingly when something is nice and something is appreciated, you feel loved and you are happy, these water crystals forms, as you can see. And if something goes bad and somebody is yelling at you, somebody is angry and tell you bad words, then your water crystals basically fall apart. Now, as you can see it in the picture, when your water crystals falls apart, your body water basically turns into a mud. This is how I would describe it. So be careful as you are speaking, because whenever you are angry, you yourself is hearing those words and your own body water is turning into mud when you are angry. So you actually doing the same thing for the other person who you are angry. So think about what you want, what you want to reach out of the other person and unconsciously you want to burst out of anger. And if you do that, you know that you are going to be disrupting the other person's water crystals. And if you think that you want to have empowering feeling and happiness and love feeling and you want to actually convey this to the other person which will make the other person of course work uh, in a way that is very efficient and in peace then just make sure that you are conveying your love you expressing your gratitude you say thank you I love you say your appreciations and once you do that water crystals will be forming back in the other person and he will be happy or she will be happy to do anything what you want so this is basically our little mind session on our water crystals and, uh, and I w uh, would like to show you one more thing before I uh, sign off from this session is what happens when you put rice or uh, water in uh, uh, rice or flour into waters like this. So if, if your rice is put into uh, water which has been exposed by I hate you, I kill you words those basically turn the water crystals into mud and the rice goes into um, um, dead and turns into brown and so as flour so you put flour into water like this a flower will die and if you expose these into words like thank you I love you the rice will stay white and the flower will stay uh, alive so this was um, a, a little mind session for you I hope this brought you the learning and I love you and I'm very very happy that you are here and it's all grateful for you thank you Welcome back to the Alive with Dr. Zhu show and you are watching it on 247online.tv. So we arrived to our second segment which is our eating part. Today we are exploring the water and we are just talking about what feels bad and we are talking about all with the body water. Now a lot of, lot of us are all concerned about our age and we know that skin shows very fast how you are basically aging and uh, not to mention how much you are keeping your body in shape but today we're going to talk about body water as you can see this flower here and the leaves as you know that if there is enough water 
in the petals and the leaves of this um, flower, that means the more fresh it stays, the more beautiful the petals are staying. This is exactly true for the skin and for your body. So the more you hydrate your body and the more you actually uh, thinking about it and taking care of it, the younger your skin and the outside of your body basically will look like. Now, how do, how do we achieve that through food? Now, you know that there are so-called high water content foods, which are the fruits and the vegetables. And among those are even the higher water content, which is like watermelons and the peaches and the nectarines. And there are the dates and the figs and uh, those which have lower water content. Now, you want to choose exactly foods which are identical in water content with you so that appro approximately 70% or even higher for optimal hydration. And since the summer is here and the hot weather is here and you are sweating a lot and perspiring a lot, is a lot of water being lost out of your body. So if you are not replacing it, your body is going to be crinkled in your skins. So make sure that your body living better and feeling better when you are actually giving a lot of high water content foods for your um, body. So how does it basically look like? So I just like to give you a tip. Since we mentioned our blood sugar regulation in our previous uh, session, you know that you are eating three meals a day and two snacks. So that gives you a chance of five times to eat fruit. So and I would suggest to eat fruit, one or two fruits before your meal. And that would be your high water content part of your vegetable or the uh, uh, fruit content of your, of your plate and eat it before your meal. It's much easier to digest compared to when you eat it in after your meal. But it basically will be left up to you. Just give it a shot, see how it's going. Now, on the hydration part, it's not only the high water content foods what we need to eat, but we need to be actually consuming uh, water. So when we are talking about hydration, we're talking about water, and lastly is uh, mineral water. If you are taking anything which is teas or, um, or juices, they have sugar content in there, not to mention. And all the other things which are, for example, the colorings, if it's not fresh juice, it's taken out of the box. So anything which is bound with water will be making your body work harder to, to uh, wash it out of your body. So I would suggest stay with your water. And in a hot weather, two and a half liters of water is easily can be uh, taken in. So now how do we distribute this large amount of uh, water, which seems like? So if you take a half an hour before your meals and snacks, half a liter of water and just drink it down, that's very easily can be done. Then And you have this five times a day, you are done with your two and a half liters of water. So if you are finding yourself going to the bathroom, to the washroom too many times and too soon after drinking water, that just means your body needs a little salt. And since you are sweating a lot and perspiring in the heat, you need to have it. So how do you do that? Himalayan and sea salt is the best source to actually replace your, uh, um, your salts and keep your uh, water in your body. So little sprinkles on your meals and even in between, it just works very well. So this was your hydration, making your uh, skin and you look like beautiful and um, young. So if you like that, keep that, try that. Thank you. This was Dr. Zhu for you. And this is uh, 247online.tv. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Welcome back to Alive with Dr. Zhu, and this is 247online.tv. And we are arriving to our third segment, which is moving to be alive. I'm bringing you again something very easy. In the first session, we were talking about how to walk and how walk is important for you and how healthy it is for you to move on and keep your body in action. Now, I'd like to show you today something which is even more simple than walking, and you can do it at home, and you don't have to go outside for that. So that is called uh, sun salutation. We're going to borrow this from yoga because it's such a wonderful thing for your body. Now, I'm going to show you how the sun salutation looks like. It's about 10 basic movements, which comes one after another. And you are breathing in a rhythmic order, inhalation and exhalation in a way as your body is moving. 
Normally, we will be inhaling whenever your body is opening up and exhaling whenever your body is closing in. So just keep that on your mind. We normally breathe always through the nose because that's filtering the air out and making it sure that it's properly and it's going slower and deeper into your abdomen. So keep that on your mind when we do this. So have a look at this. This is how the sun salutation looks like. And we recorded this for you on the beach. So bring you a little bit of an effect on how the sun salutation looks like when you do it outside and you have a little bit of a background of the uh, sea. So this is very therapeutic. So have a look. This is how it looks like. This is sun salutation for you. So it starts with standing, with reaching your arm up, going forward, going down to the ground, and going all the way up. So check it out. Um, exercise with us and see how it's working out for you. So when you do this uh, sun salutation, as you can see it behind me, in a slow manner, it is going to be working more on your strength and uh, more on your calming your body down when you are tired. So I also encourage you when you are tired, start out doing the sun salutation, which you will be repeated many times one after another, is start slower. So pause in each pause, in, in each uh, position, and wait a little bit and breathe there. It will help your body to recover if you are tired. So that means within a minute or two, you, you are going to feel better to move a little bit faster. And going slower actually is um, a warm-up session for your uh, exercises. So even if you do this sun salutation before your walking session, it also helps. Now, in order to have a sun salutation workout, you need to complete about five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 10, and who knows how long time you want to spend uh, doing the sun salutation. So if you go slow, it's going to be working more on your strength, on your muscles, and, if, and your stretching and your flexibility. And if you are start to pick up the pace and you're doing it faster, so each breath will be one movement, then it's going to have a cardiorespiratory effect. That means it's work on your heart and your lungs. So this gives an overall very good benefit because while you are breathing, your lungs massaging different organs in your body. And therefore, it's giving a very nice calming and toning effect for those organs which underperform will bring it up. And those organs which are overperforming, they will calm it down. So have a look, check it out. This is sun salutation for you. And this is the most simple thing. So take this, uh, uh, this video, watch it a few times, start practicing it. I like to do it in the morning. So I welcome you for that, for, it, for you to have a really wonderful day. So thank you so much. Stay tuned. This is Dr. Zhu for you with the moving session. Thank you. So welcome back. This is Alive with Dr. Zhu and we are arriving to our fourth segment, which is our resting to be alive. So today we are going to talk about breathing and uh, breathing to extend your breath. Now, why we are doing that? We know that oxygen and putting in too much oxygen in our body is one of the things which will corrode or make rusty our body. So this is why we are going to learn to actually slow down the breathing. So the exercise to do this is going to be, inhalation is going to be on three counts, and exhalation is going to be on six counts. We are exclusively breathing through the nose, and as you are breathing in, the breath is going to come deep down into your abdomen, and you're slowing it down and breathing it out. Now make sure that, that this breathing is actually continuous, so you don't take a deep breath and all of a sudden just wait the rest of the two seconds, and also the exhalation, you exhale all out in the first two or three seconds, and it's continuously and it's evenly going. So if I would actually count it for you it would look like this inhalation and one two and three and exhalation one two three four five and six so continue doing that it's inhalation and exhalations on inhaling on three counts and exhaling on six counts now if you are comfortable with this we are going to be progressing into inhalation and four counts and exhalation on eight counts. Now you have to train yourself for this and it's going to be look like this. Inhalation and one, two, three, and four, and exhalation on eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and do it again. Inhalation and one, two, three, and four, and exhalation on eight, seven, six, five, four, three, 
two and one. So continue this until your body gets used to it and you will feel the effect of that. Now scientifically to explain to you what's happening in your body is actually this. Once we are extending our breathing, we're holding oxygen longer down into the bottom of the lungs, so more oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange can actually happen. And a uh, little bit of a trick to this, because once we are slowing down the breathing, the blood actually feels that it becomes a little bit more acidic through the uh, lactic acid which is being produced. And uh, that is a cue for the body to start a so-called buffer mechanism and to make more bicarbonate. So this is on the uh, scientific side for you. And this bicarbonate goes to the brain and it brings you the calming effect. So anytime you need on the dot anything, a little bit of a calming, start doing the breath uh, counting three to six, progressing into four to eight. And then the eight, if you are comfortable with that, you can actually extend it into 10 into 12 and into uh, uh, 14. So have fun with that, enjoy it. You will feel the benefit. If you never try it, you will never know it. So thank you so much. This was Dr. Zhu for you on the uh, resting part. And, I'll, and I wish you a peaceful and a wonderful day. Thank you. You are watching 247online.tv. Thank you. So, Hello and welcome to 247online.tv and this is Alive with Dr. Zhu, a little bit on the social side. So I'm having here Aisha who normally interviews other people <laughs> right. and now I'm here asking questions from her. Thank you so much Zhu. On the line of sports because you've been an athlete. Right, and you which were... I'm sure not a lot of people know about it. But oh, yeah. so let's reveal because this is a wonderful thing to know yeah. about you and I'm sure that this is going to inspire a lot of people and a lot of youth especially to start. Mm -hmm. What made you go into elite sports and swimming? Zhu, um, uh, my parents themselves were very active in um, sports. My my mom was an athlete and my dad was always into some sort of exercise. Um, we joined a club and uh, there all three of the siblings including my two brothers we were actually told to be part of some sport or the other. Mm. My brothers unfortunately they just did it for exercise but not on a professional level but the club that I had gone to uh, really promoted swimming at that time mm -hmm. and they were taking it on a competition level and eventually that just I started generating interest into sports mm. and I liked swimming so I got into the camps and I got training and then I was taken to the Karachi level swimming competition mm -hmm. and eventually then it went to the province level and then we were picked up from the provincial level and taken to the national level oh, very good. so it was a step-by-step -step process mm -hmm. long time took a lot of effort took a lot of hard time took a lot of dedication but eventually I did get the result that I wanted and uh, I guess the... And what was the result actually? The result was that um, I did go to the international competitions. I did represent this country um, on international platforms. Um, us coming from a uh, Islamic Republic of Pakistan and girls actually going into the swimming, swimming field yes. was a big surprise and shock for all the Western world yes. because you know at that point in time Pakistan had a very different perception about yes. and you had to wear a different kind of yeah swimming and suit. thankfully uh, the sports swimming um, normally if you see sport uh, their costumes are a bit revealing yes. but then by the time I had got into the international sport there had been a swimsuit which was actually covering the entire body yes. Um, so that There's had no really problem. solved the problem for us. Yes. So at that point in time, we did not. We even fought with that um, restriction mm -hmm. or limitation that we had from the people. So the swimming costume was designed as such that it really did uh, comply yes. with the religious yes. forms. Right. So now. how do you think it's important that parents actually become examples for their children to start exercise to the end? Sure. I think parents do play the most important role. Um, I, if it had not been my parents, I wouldn't have actually wanted the sports field mm -hmm. because um, they had planned out, a, an out, you know, like my plan for yes. me. They had chalked out my day routine for me and yes. I had to be within that routine. And thankfully, I think at this point in time, I will take this opportunity to thank my parents actually right now for having me where I am right now is because of them. Had they not pushed me back then, I wouldn't be sitting here and talking about Fantastic. this. Fantastic. So how much did it help you with your being organized and time management and all that? Uh, if I had told you my routine, uh, we used to go to school in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, at 6, 5.30 we used to wake up, go for training, get done at 7.30, have a breakfast in the yes. car, go to the school, come back home, have lunch, do whatever bit of homework that we had gotten from yes. school, um, did a religious reading of Quran and stuff mm -hmm. and then at 4 o'clock dot we used to leave for the club. 
and we used to come back home at 7:30, have our dinner, and go to sleep. So that was my routine. That That's was right. my. I was very disciplined with time management, mm -hmm. and I had to make sure that I get stuff done before four o'clock. So you. So that was my time management. With sports came also the exposure. I had met a lot of people. I had discovered things. Yes. I was a bit independent on the um, state that where I had to travel abroad. Obviously, mm -hmm. my parents wouldn't accompany me everywhere. So that had given me the feeling of having, you know, being independent, independent, taking care of all that I have to, mm -hmm. which just includes living and meeting and being careful about, you know, security, everything. So with that time, I'd actually learned and I did grow up learning. So yes. the whole learning experience, I think, is what counted the most. So how much do you think it's important that parents allow the kids to be independent and make their own choices through sports as it had to come right. to you? I think uh, by if I'm talking about independent doesn't mean, because normally in being independent is taken in a negative connotation yes. on this side. But here, independent, where parents said, this is a platform, make the best use of it. That's right. We are there to support you. Just make sure whenever you fall, we will hold you back there. That's right. So right. They, we were independent to one extent, but we had our parents behind us. Great. So, you know, that was the independency that I really enjoyed. That's fantastic. Yeah. So then, Elliot Sports finished. And what happened? Um, I think, uh, being 15 years, I started swimming in the nine, year 1995. Mm -hmm. And then I quit in 2010 because at that point in time, I had gotten into the university. Yes. Until school time, I got a lot of support from my school. Mm -hmm. They had let me go because at that time, we had to leave for training for almost three months. And yes, getting yes. off from a school for three months was yes. a big thing. But my school supported me then. When I had gotten into the graduation level, it was really difficult because we have a different system, mm -hmm. semesters, where I couldn't keep dropping semesters. So eventually, at that one point, I realized, okay, I cannot go beyond this. So 2006, I gave up my international swimming career, mm -hmm. and 2010, I gave up my swimming career as a whole. But no, I did not totally give it up. Um, in Pakistan, we all know what this, um, the, what the situation is of sports here and in the yes. infrastructure and the coaches, uh, lack of coaches. So what I had experienced during my time, I decided I will not let my next generation of swimmers go through the same. So me and my cousin, who was also into uh, international yes. sports, um, we decided to become coaches. Oh, wonderful. We decided to give whatever we had learned from our experiences to these people that we saw mm -hmm. around us who are into this profession right now. So we attended this FINA's um, swimming clinic that was taking place here. Mm -hmm. um, an Indian head coach had come. We took a six weeks course with him. And uh, we then decided to um, go to the next level, which was coaching. And um, for now, because I'm involved in 2 for 7 so much that I couldn't continue my career for long, but uh, I'm still of help. Um, the association is still working. I'm still part of the association. We do have swimming competitions. Mm -hmm. I am a technical official there. And um, so I'm doing this right now. But at that point, I had to quit because, you know, there's, there does come one yes. point of time where you cannot go. So what about your this. general fitness? General fitness, what happened um, to I do try and go for swimming almost twice a week. Mm -hmm. So that keeps me sane mm -hmm. out of my routine. Keeps me sane. But I like how you yeah, say that. It just keeps me sane because whenever I feel very stressed out or I'm very mm -hmm. angry, I just go and take a dive in the pool. Okay. And that just takes everything away. It just, you know, it just reminds me of my past and what all I had done. And it's just a recalling period Brings for me. Brings back the feelings. Yeah. But uh, physical uh, fitness, yes. I think swimming is the best sport. It's a complete body workout. It not only it's not physical, also it's mental. Mental, yes. Yeah. So what if some people don't have a pool? What do you suggest for them to do? I think um, here majority of the people do not have access to a lot of uh, sports mm -hmm. uh, related facilities. But I think the best you can do is at least take a one hour walk. You can just take out a one hour or thirty minutes out of your day schedule and just go out for a walk. How would it help people? It would, would just, it, help you? it just opens up your mind. It's, mm. you know, f and I, I personally do not agree with gyms because I find it very closed environment. Yes. I prefer having my fitness in an open area with okay. fresh air and, you know, greenery yes. around me yes. and life around me. That's what exercises to me. Because when I go to the gym, there's music, loud music, yes. and there are people around and there's some chatting and just a, too many distractions. So if I just, I'm sure you have a park or you have some public place around you, just go have a nice half an hour walk, do some stretches, breathe, 
have deep breathing you know early morning or evening time just do the breathing exercise that's just exercise for me that's what counts for me the most great thank you so much for sharing thank you Olga. and this was uh, dr Zhu with aisha today for a live social and this was um, 247 online.tv thank you for watching see you next time